uh, Governor Christie throughout this process has been responsive. Uh, he's been aggressive in making sure that the state got out in front uh, of this incredible storm. Uh, and I think the people of New Jersey recognize uh, that he has put his heart and soul into making sure that uh, the people of New Jersey bounce back uh, even stronger than before. So I just want to thank him for his extraordinary thank leadership you, uh, and partnership. President Obama spent part of the day today in coastal New Jersey, along with New Jersey's Republican governor, Chris Christie. He has worked incredibly closely with me um, since before the storm hit. Uh, I think this is our sixth conversation um, since the weekend. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a great working relationship uh, to make sure that we're doing the jobs that people elected us to do. And I cannot thank the president enough for his personal concern and compassion for our state and for the people of our state. You know, you would expect in a disaster this big that a president would be standing alongside and directing storm response with the governor from the state most affected by the disaster. I mean, generically speaking, this sort of appearance is not a remarkable concept. This thing becomes remarkable, though, to see President Obama and Chris Christie standing together and praising one another and talking about the ways they are working together and to see their coordinated state and federal efforts to respond to this disaster as governor and president. This sort of thing becomes remarkable today only because President Obama is a Democrat and Chris Christie is a Republican. And Chris Christie specifically is a Republican who has been a very caustic partisan critic of President Obama in his role as a campaign surrogate for Mitt Romney who President Obama is running against in a presidential election that ends in six days. Mitt Romney and that campaign today, that campaign that Chris Christie has been supporting, um, they made a somewhat remarkable decision to go ahead and keep campaigning today, uh, to get back on the campaign trail and start doing partisan campaign rallies again, even while the president was still suspending his own schedule so he could respond to the storm. So what we saw today in split screen was President Obama departing the White House en route to storm-ravaged New Jersey after he stopped in at FEMA headquarters, and at the same time, Mitt Romney in full-on campaign mode in Tampa, Florida. And then it was President Obama touring coastal New Jersey and comforting victims of Hurricane Sandy while Mitt Romney was holding what he called a big victory rally outside Miami. And while the Romney campaign made sure to have their most telegenic staffer say on camera today that they were going to avoid any partisan commentary today out of respect for the storm victims, they said they were going to avoid any partisan attacks on President Obama on this very serious day. They said they would do that, but they apparently really did not mean it because at a rally in Wisconsin today, they had the Republican Party chairman talking about how America needs to fire Barack Obama and saying that the battle to defeat President Obama is a battle for this country's freedom. At a rally with Mitt Romney in Florida today, they had that state's former Republican governor, Jeb Bush, talking about President Obama as a failure, his failure to bring this country together. At the same event, they had a Republican con state congressman uh, uh, tell parents that they should threaten to take Halloween candy away from any children of Obama supporters that they know tonight. That's what he suggested it. I think the idea was that uh, he said Obama is a redistributionist, and so you can scare kids and their Obama-supporting parents about redistribution if you steal the kids' candy. Yet that was the tenor of the Romney campaign today, even as they told the press corps that they were going to be very respectful and nonpartisan and refrain from attacking the president today. It was just a remarkable, remarkable day. It was a remarkable decision. I mean, President Obama is expected to restart his campaign schedule tomorrow, but Mr. Romney did not want to wait for that. He started his campaign events today. Oh, I'm sorry, are you stuck doing something else? Well, I'll take advantage of that. I'll get back on the campaign trail. I'm heading to Florida. Apparently, you're otherwise occupied. Well, I'm not. It's remarkable. It is a remarkable decision to restart his campaign today. But honestly, it is also remarkable that Mr. Romney never really stopped campaigning in the first place. We reported yesterday on this event that Mr. Romney held in Dayton, Ohio, yesterday afternoon. It was an event that had previously been billed as a victory rally in Dayton. With the entire country riveted to this natural disaster in the East and the president off the campaign trail entirely to deal with the crisis, the Romney campaign realized it would be coarse to keep campaigning. The campaign's communications director put out a statement uh, on Monday saying that the Romney campaign was going to be canceling all campaign events, quote, out of sensitivity to the millions of Americans in the path of Hurricane Sandy. See, they realized they had to seem like they were being sensitive to the crisis, but they really, really wanted to hold that rally in Dayton. 
So what do you do? How do you promise to cancel your political rallies in order to seem sensitive, but then hold your rallies anyway? Well, in the case of Dayton yesterday and Mitt Romney, they held the same event at the same time, in the same venue, with the same celebrities, and they showed the same vote for Mitt Romney campaign video from the Republican convention, but they just changed the name of the event. They called it a storm relief event, event uh, instead of calling it a victory rally. The one thing they changed materially about the campaign rally in order to make people call it a storm relief event is that they asked people to bring canned goods and groceries as donations to the Red Cross. One of the problems with this, as we talked about on last night's show, is that that's not actually the right way to donate to the Red Cross. I mean, the desire to give groceries and canned goods at a time of natural disaster comes from the right place. It is a nice impulse. But unless you are specifically requested by relief agencies or, pu or public officials to do that, Donating canned goods and groceries is just not logistically helpful, especially on a large scale and from across the country. Especially if you are a presidential candidate getting national press implicitly telling the whole country that this is the way to help. This is what everybody ought to be doing. And I'm not just giving you my, my opinion on this. This is explicitly what the Red Cross says about donations on their website. They make clear under their frequently asked questions on their website that while they are grateful for any way that people want to help, they don't actually accept in-kind donations like that. It just gives them a ton of extra work to do, sorting through all your old cans and groceries and stuff when they really want to be helping people. The way that you actually can help them is to donate blood or donate money. Of course, having Mitt Romney do a photo op where people handed him money, people handed him checks, probably would not make as good a photo op as people handing him bags of cans. So the Romney campaign set up a photo op where people could hand him bags of cans. BuzzFeed reporter McKay Coppins was at that event and added some important detail today um, to how it all went down. Amazing story. Apparently, the campaign was worried that people would not bring enough cans and stuff to donate. And that would mess up their planned photo op of Mitt Romney carrying canned goods. So, quoting Busby, the night before the event, campaign aides went to a local Walmart and spent $5,000 on granola bars, canned food, and diapers. As supporters lined up to greet the candidate, a young volunteer in a Romney Ryan t-shirt stood, his hands cupped around his mouth, shouting, you need a donation to get in line. Empty-handed supporters pled for entrance with one woman asking, what if we dropped our donations off up front? The volunteer gestured toward a pile of groceries conveniently stacked near the candidate and said, just grab something. Two teenage boys retrieved a jar of peanut butter each and got in line. When it was their turn, they handed their, quote, donations to Mr. Romney. He took them, smiled, and offered an earnest thank you. So to be clear, the campaign, the Romney campaign, they held their campaign rally. They called it a storm relief event. They bought donations for the Red Cross, and then they handed those donations to their own supporters in order to photograph them, handing them back to Mitt Romney. So it would look like he inspired generous donations from those people that he did not actually inspire. And that if they had bothered to check with the Red Cross, the Red Cross doesn't actually want. And they certainly don't want modeled as national behavior for what the Red Cross wants. Again, the Red Cross, for the record, does not want your cans. They want your money and your blood donation if you do actually want to help. I don't know what it looks like in a photo op, but you can text the word Red Cross to 90999. That will give a $10 donation to the Red Cross that you will see appear on your phone bill. You can do that right now as you are watching this show. Text 90999, the word Red Cross, and it will be a $10 donation. That actually will help. You can also go to redcross.org and donate through their website. And you can donate blood probably in your hometown at a blood drive. You can check with your local Red Cross office about donating blood. This is a real disaster. This is not a plot in a sitcom about how to run for president. This is a real disaster, an ongoing one, affecting millions of Americans. And real help really is needed. And that is not the same thing as using the suffering of millions of Americans as an occasion to accrue political capital for yourself by trying to create the appearance that you are helping when you are not bothering to actually try to really help. That is something very different. This is, uh, this is quite a time for the country, as you know. We're, we're going through trauma in a major part of the country, a kind of trauma you've experienced here in Florida more than once. And, um, and it's interesting to see how people come together in a circumstance like this. Now, people coming together is what's also going to happen, I believe, on November 7th. And um... see, they're pretty much equivalent. 
helping people who are suffering with their lives in danger because our fellow Americans have been affected by a devastating, gigantic, national caliber, national disaster in our biggest population center. It's pretty much the same thing as helping Mitt Romney get elected. It's pretty much the same thing, right? We all come together, right?